Hi, I'm Greg Marcus. I'm the pastor of Improvai Christian Center. This is our Sunday morning church service via the internet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for participating in this service with us, for partaking of this service, for meeting with us, I guess we could say, whenever you're watching it. Hallelujah. But thank you for being part of this ministry. We so, 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 so appreciate you participating in this with us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, so for the past several months, I guess we've been on the subject of how to pray and get answers, and then I got off on this part that I've been focusing on in more detail, which is the prayer of decreeing, and right now I'm on the part, on this part of the prayer of decreeing, I want to show you that Jesus taught his disciples to decree. And we looked at some scriptures, but then we got over here to John chapter 14 and starting, you know, around verse 8 or 9 or something like that. John chapter 14, and we began looking at it in a little more detail on this scriptures. I want to look at them in a lot of detail because there's a lot of stuff going on here and people are kind of sometimes we're missing parts of it because we were not really reading it with the right ideas in our head, with the right background in our head. John chapter 14, verse 12. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. But we're focusing right now on verse 12. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. Well, what does it mean to believe in Jesus? Hallelujah. Or or let me put it to you this way. What does he mean by the me part of that? You know, he says, whoever believes in me, what does Jesus mean by the me part of whoever believes in me. Can you see what I'm saying? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Whoever believes in me will do the works I'm doing. What, what, what are, he doesn't just mean, you know, believe I existed, right? You know, sometimes we say Jesus Christ, and we think Christ is Jesus's last name, but we have saw in the previous three or four episodes that uh, the word Christ is just the Greek translation of a Hebrew word, which I guess we could uh, pronounce Messiah, which means in English we would translate it the anointed one. So it kind of goes like this, Jesus the Messiah, Jesus Christ, Jesus the anointed one, if we were just translating it. Well, what is the Messiah? Jesus, he says, whoever believes in me. Well, we saw that the Bible calls him the Messiah. Watch, turn over to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, this is a scripture we're all familiar with. And this is when uh, Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And then he says in verse 15, this is Jesus. He says, but what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? Verse 16, Matthew chapter 16, verse 16, Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus says, whoever believes in me, the works that, what does he mean by me? He means the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. Hallelujah. Jesus is the Messiah. We looked at, turn over to John. We looked at a bunch of these, but let me just give you two of them. John chapter 11. And this is a story of when uh, Jesus is going to raise Lazarus from the dead. And first he's talking to his sister and she's telling, well, if you'd have been here, you could have raised him from the dead. And I know that even right now, God will do whatever you ask. Hallelujah. In verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will leave even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Let's go back to uh, the one in Matthew for a second. I want to emphasize something. Simon Peter, but what about you? He, He asked, who do you say I am? Verse 16, Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. See, so both of them kind of said it the same way. The Messiah, Peter says, Messiah, the Son of the living God. 
And then Martha says, uh, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Hallelujah. Uh, so those things are kind of connected in their mind. The Messiah, the Son of the living God, the Messiah, the Son of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, what is a Messiah? Or what did they think was Messiah? Just hold on to the Son of God part, and I'll show you where we're going to connect that all together in a second. But here's what I want you to see. What is a Messiah? And we began to look at that last week. And we saw basically that a Messiah is a king. Watch, turn over to Luke chapter 23. And starting at verse, well, let's start at verse 1. This is when Jesus is about to be crucified. Verse 1, then the whole assembly rose and led him off to Pilate. And they began to accuse him saying, we have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Messiah, a king. Hallelujah. So you can see Messiah. What is the Messiah? What did they understand Messiah to be? Messiah is a king. We saw in Psalm 110 verse 1, which I, I told you is the most often quoted scripture in the New Testament, that the Messiah is that Jesus applies to the Messiah, that the Messiah in Psalm 110 verse 1 is the one seated at God's right hand. Hallelujah. Hall until his enemies be put under his feet. So a king. He's seated at God's right hand as the a empowered by God in God's throne, uh, exercising God's power, we could say. So what is a Messiah? A Messiah is a king. Jesus says, whoever believes in me, what do we need? to? We need to believe he is the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. What is a Messiah? A Messiah is a king. Hallelujah. And so we can see that Jesus is described as a king. Hallelujah. Not even using the word Messiah. But you will see that he's described as a king. So turn over to Ephesians chapter 1, because this is the scripture where I first began to understand what, uh, hallelujah, what this was talking about, because this is a prayer that Papa Hagen would tell people to pray. And so I was praying, and I prayed it over and over and over, and one day I came to understand, oh my goodness, look what it says here. Let's start reading at verse 19, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19. And it says this, talking about Paul in this prayer is praying that we would get a spirit of wisdom, revelation, the knowledge of God. The eyes of our understanding would be enlightened so we could know certain things. And one of the things he wants us to know is his God's incomparably great power for us who believe. God's great power towards us when we believe. God's great, the power that God exercises uh, on us, towards us, upon us. I don't know the right word, but that God uses on us when we become Christians, huh? when we believe, when we become in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. God exercises power on us. That's what he's talking about. He wants us to know his in incomparably great power for us who believe. And it says this, that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted. That power is the same as the mighty strength who exerted, as God exerted. That power, the power he works in us when we are raised from the dead, when we are become Christians, when we are born again, when we accept Jesus Christ, that power that he exercises in us is he says here, hallelujah, that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted, hallelujah, who exerted, that God exerted when he, who he, when God raised Christ from the dead, hallelujah, the power that he exercises towards us when we become Christians is the same, I like to say it's the exact same power, it's the very same power that he exerted when he raised Christ. Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. Why is that? Because when he raised Christ from the dead, you know why it's that same power? You know why I say it's the exact same power? You know why I say it's the very same power? Because when he raised Christ from the dead, he raised us from the dead. Because when he raised Christ from the dead, he raised us from the dead. Hallelujah. Because when he raised Christ from the dead, he raised us from the dead. Let's keep reading. And so he wants us to know his incomparably great power for us who believe that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. That power that he exerts towards us is the same power. 
Hallelujah. Did he exert it when he raised Christ from the dead? Hallelujah. How do I know it? Because he raised us from the dead and seated him. It's the same power that he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead that he uses the same power towards us when we become Christians that he exerted toward Christ when he raised him from the dead and, and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realm. It's the same power. You know why I say it's the exact same power? The very same power? Because when he raised Christ from the dead, he raised us from the dead. When he seated Christ at his right hand in the heavenly realms, he seated us at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Watch, skip down to chapter 2 and... Hallelujah, hallelujah. And verse 6, just real quick here, it says, And God raised us up with Christ. We, he raised us up with, and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We were seated with him. That's why he says it's the same power. He wants us to know. He wants us to get the spirit of rest so we can understand this thing, so we can know what the power he exercised towards us when we became Christians. What did he do for us when we became Christians? Uh, when we, we became Christians, when we accepted Christ, when we received Christ, hallelujah, we died on the cross with Christ. I am crucified with Christ, the apostle Paul says. Greg can say, I am crucified with Christ. If you accept me, I I am crucified with Christ. I died on the cross with Christ. Then when I accepted Jesus, what happened? God, whoo, exercised the power to raise us from the dead. Hallelujah. He exercised power to make us sit at God's right hand in the heavens, just like he did for Jesus. And why is it just the same as he did for Jesus? Because we're in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we accept Christ, we were crucified with Christ. We are in Christ. Hallelujah. I like to think about it this way. You know, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. When the vine is crucified, Greg the branch was crucified. Hallelujah. When the vine was buried, Greg the branch was buried. Uh, when the vine was raised from the dead, Greg the branch was raised from the dead. When the vine was seated at the right hand of God, Greg the branch was seated at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what he wants. That's Paul's praying that we would get that revelation of what's happened to us. What has happened to us? Since we've become Christians, since we've been in Christ Jesus, since we've received Christ, since we've accepted the Messiah, hallelujah, since we believe that Jesus is the Messiah, what's happened to us? Hallelujah, we were crucified with Christ. We were buried with Christ. We were raised from the dead with Christ, and we were seated at God's right hand. We were exalted to the heavens and seated at God's right hand with Christ, in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's not what we're looking at right now. I just get excited reading that part. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so go back. He was praying that we would get the spirit of wisdom and revelation so we can know Hallelujah. His incomparably great power for us who believe that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead, seating him in his right hand in the heavenlies. Okay, that's the same power he exerted in us. But I just want to focus on the first part because most Christians don't seem to uh, have a grasp of that either. Hallelujah. Forget about them seeing that we've been raised with Christ, raised from the dead with Christ. Forget about them thinking we've been crucified with Christ. Forget about them thinking we died with Christ. Forget about them thinking that we were raised from the dead with Christ. Forget about them thinking that we were exalted to the right hand of God and seated at God's right hand with Christ. Hallelujah. Most Christians don't even realize God was, that Jesus, when he was raised from the dead and ascended to heaven, he was seated at God's right hand. And that's the part we're focusing on now. Jesus, the king. Jesus is a king. Jesus is a king. That's what Messiah means. Jesus Christ. Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus, the anointed one. Jesus, the king. That's why I like to call him the great king. Jesus, the great king has come. Jesus, the great king. Woo! Hallelujah. The one who's going to deliver us. The one who's going to rescue us. The one who's going to lift us up. The one who's going to give us peace. The one who's going to give us prosperity. The one who will heal us. Hallelujah. Jesus, the great king. And I want you to see here. All I want you to see here is, here's a picture of Jesus, the king. Hallelujah. 
Where, <laughs> hallelujah, he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. What did he do after he raised Christ from the dead? He seated him at his right hand. God seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realm, far above. This is a place of authority. The right hand of God is the place of authority. The right hand of God is the place of authority. The right hand of God, you can tell because he says next, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. Verse 22, and God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything. Holly, isn't that a king? Jesus is the king. Jesus, the Messiah, means Jesus the king. Jesus is a king. Jesus, the Messiah, means Jesus is a king. Watch, let me show you another one that's kind of pertinent. Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And let's start reading at verse, oh, geez, hallelujah. The, you need to get the context of 1 Corinthians 15, which is that uh, Paul is talking about the resurrection from the dead. Most Christians have this idea that we're going to live in heaven forever. Hallelujah. But the Bible, Jesus, the apostle Paul, the apostles, they believed in the resurrection from the dead. Those bodies of ours that are buried, my mom and dad were buried over here. Hallelujah. Woo! If they're in Christ Jesus, they were in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Someday those bodies will be raised from the dead. Hallelujah. That's the resurrection of the dead. And that's what Paul's talking about here in, first, in the whole chapter of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Paul is talking about the resurrection because there were people in those, oh, no, I don't believe this resurrection from the dead stuff. How could the dead possibly be resurrected? Their, their bodies don't even exist. The, the, the things they were made of are, are dust and blown to the wind. How could they be resurrected from the dead? <laughs> well, I'm not in the resurrection from the dead department. <laughs> or I would tell you. Hallelujah. All I know is that that's what Jesus believed. Hallelujah. The Son of God. The great King. The Messiah. The King. Woo! The Son. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you see that? Okay, so now he's talking about the resurrection from the dead. And he's kind of trying to explain when is this going to come, you know, and all this. When will this happen? And then at verse 24, he says this. But remember, what are we looking at? We're looking at Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, the king. Jesus is a king. I want you to see another picture of Jesus as a king. Verse 24, then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom. Who? Well, let's go to verse 23. But each in turn, Christ, the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Well, let's go to verse 22 then. For as Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. Hallelujah. But each in turn, Christ, the first, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Verse 24. Then the end will come when he, who's he? Christ, the anointed one, the king, the Messiah, hands over the kingdom to God the Father. Wait a second. Then the end will come when he, Jesus, the anointed one, the Christ, the Messiah, hallelujah, after, hallelujah. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father. Well, wait a second. In order to hand over the kingdom to God the Father, you got to have the kingdom. In order to hand over the kingdom to God the Father, that means you gotta be in possession of the kingdom. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In order to hand over the, the kingdom, the reign, hallelujah, the authority back to God the Father, that means you had the kingdom, the reign, the authority before you gave it back to the Father. Jesus is a king. That's what Messiah means. Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, the king, the great king. Hallelujah. Then the end will come when he, Jesus, hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has done something. Jesus is, isn't, Jesus is not just sitting up there on the throne, kicking back, saying, whoa, look at me, I'm sitting on the throne. Woo! 
hallelujah. Boy, this is the most uncomfortable seat in the history of mankind, but I'm on the throne. <laughs> no, Jesus isn't just sitting on the throne. You know, wait, well, here I am. Hallelujah. Look at, then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed. He's doing something. What is he doing? After he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. When does the end come? You know, uh, there's lots of Christians. Oh, the end. This is the sign. The end is here. The end is coming. <laughs> it's tomorrow. It's next week. I know. I just read in the newspaper. I saw him fuck you. The end is here. Hallelujah. People have been saying that for 2,000 years. Hallelujah. When is the end going to come? Here, here, you can see he's going to tell us when the end is going to come right here. Hallelujah. 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 Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father. If Jesus doesn't have a kingdom, then he can't hand it over to God the Father. So he has to have a kingdom. Hallelujah. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has done some, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign. Who does reigning? Who reigns? Kings reign. Jesus is a king. Jesus is the great king. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the anointed. He that believes in me, the works that I do, will he do also. You need to believe in Jesus, the king. Jesus is the king. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the anointed one. Jesus is the one seated at God's right hand, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named both in this world and that which is to come. Jesus is the king. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom, when Jesus hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he, Jesus has destroyed. He's doing something with his dominion. He's doing something. Look, go back to Ephesians for a second. Let me just show you that. How, when, when is this taking place that he says here, hallelujah, about uh, he exerted, hallelujah, he's wanting us to know, get the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and knowledge of him, so we can know his God's incomparably great power towards us when we become Christians, when we accept Christ, when we get in Christ Jesus, he wants us to know that incomparably great power, hallelujah. And he says that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. He exerted this uh, power when he raised Christ from the dead, and he exerted this power and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Hallelujah. When did God seat uh, <laughs> Christ at his right hand in the heavenly realms? Is that something that's happening in the future? Or is he already seated at God's right hand in the heavenly realms? Hallelujah. Is Jesus going to be seated at God's right hand? Look what it says. He exerted. That's past tense, isn't it? When he raised Christ from the dead. Was Jesus already raised from the dead? Yes. Hallelujah. And seated him. Was he already seated? You can tell he's already been seated because it has an E-D at the end of the word seat. He seated him at his right hand. God, is, Jesus has already been seated at God's right hand in the heavenly realm. Where was he seated? Far above all rule and authority, power, dominion, every name that is invoked. Now look what he says this. Every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. Hallelujah. When is the one to come? Hallelujah. The age of the one to come is the age of the resurrection from the dead. Hallelujah. The age to come is the age of the resurrection from the dead. When is the resurrection from the dead going to come? After Jesus has put down all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Hallelujah. 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 You know, like, like we like to have, you know, people have all these things about uh, dispensations, I guess is what they call it. I remember one time in Bible school, one of the teachers was talking about dispensations. And I asked him, well, where is that in the Bible? And he kind of went, I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, Jesus believed in three time periods. Hallelujah. Jesus believed in three time periods. He believed in the time period of what he calls the law and the prophets. 
Hallelujah. He, said, he says about John the Baptist, the law and the prophets were until John. Hallelujah. And then what happened, Jesus? The law and the prophets were until John. And then from John forward, the kingdom of God breaks forth. Hallelujah. So we're in the, and then what happens? The age to come. Those are the three ages that Jesus believed in. Hallelujah. What did he, the law and the prophets, the kingdom of God age, or we could call it, it's also, you could call it the age of the Messiah. The kingdom of God and the age of Messiah age. Hallelujah. How the righteousness of God age. One person calls it the age of God's uh, uh, favor, the age of God's willingness to help mankind. Hallelujah. How, that's the age we're living in now. We've been living it for 2,000 years. When was Jesus seated at God's right hand? Okay, so let me show you that from this scripture. Look here, well, we're reading Ephesians chapter one. I love this scripture, so I keep reading it. It's real to me, it's exciting to me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus is reigning. We are reigning with him. Jesus is reigning. We're seated there with him. He's reigning through us here on the earth. Hallelujah. So that we could, he'd give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation so we might know some things. And one of those things is God's incomparably great power for us when we become believers, when we believe that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, every name that is invoked. Listen, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. Hallelujah. When is the coming? The age of the resurrection from the dead. The last age. Hallelujah. Hall the age of the re But here's what I want you to see. Jesus is doing this, seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. What did, what did we read over there in 1 Corinthians 15? Jesus is doing. For he must reign. Hall then comes the end when he hands the kingdom back to the Father. For he must reign reign, hallelujah. What is Paul describing here? That Paul wrote 1 Corinthians 15, right? And he's writing this, Ephesians chapter 1, hallelujah. What is Paul describing here? He said he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at, God raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realm, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So that power, that reign above all authority and power and might and dominion and every name that is invoked, hallelujah, that power is in force, not just over there in the resurrection of the dead days when Jesus, you know, comes back to earth, but it's in force right now. That's why he says, hallelujah, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. That power is in force in the present age. Jesus is reigning right now, or I like to put it this way. Jesus is Messiah-ing right now. Jesus is Messiah-ing right now. Jesus is kinging right now. Jesus is reigning right now. Jesus is the king. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the anointed one. Jesus is the great king. He is reigning right now. He is reigning right now. He is reigning right now. Now, hallelujah, hallelujah. If he's not reigning in your life, hallelujah, it's because you have not accepted his reign into your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How does Jesus reign? He reigns through his body. That's us, the Christians. That's what we're reading about. Whoever believes in me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do. Turn over to Matthew chapter 28. Hallelujah. Well, let's go first. Let's go to Luke chapter 9. Let me show you something else, and then I'm going to finish. Luke chapter 9 and verse 1. Look what it says here. 
When Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. What did he give them? He gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Hallelujah. Jesus gave them authority to proclaim the kingdom of God, to heal the sick, to cast out demons and to cure diseases. Jesus gave them authority to do those things. Hallelujah. I don't know about you guys, but I always wonder how did he give them this authority? Was there a ceremony involved? How did Jesus, it says plainly, it tells us when Jesus is called the 12, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. How did he give them that authority? How did it work? What did it look like? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Go to, uh, let's skip down a little bit to Luke chapter 10 and let me show you something. Oops, that's a long ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 17, Luke chapter 10, verse 17. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Hallelujah. So they exercised that authority. In Jesus' name, Jesus gave them authority to cast out demons, heal diseases. Hallelujah. Now they return and they say, they say to him, the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So they had the authority. He gave them authority. They exercised this authority. They're testifying that they exercised this authority. How did he give them the authority? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe he told them something like we've been reading in John chapter 14, verse 12. Whoever believes in me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask, I'm quoting him from the King James, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Woo! That's how he gave them authority. He told them, he said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose. He told them, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father. Which How did Jesus give them? That's how he gave them authority. Hallelujah. He told them, go, go in my name. Hallelujah. Whatever you demand, whatever you decree in my name, it'll happen. Hallelujah. 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 And that's what he's telling us today. That's what he's telling me. Whoever believes in me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Whatever you ask, you decree, you demand in my name, that will I do. Whatever you ask, demand, decree in my name, that will I do. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's how Jesus is reigning right now, through us, through the people who believe in him through the people who have faith in him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's our job here at Imperial Valley Christian Center, is building little Jesuses, hallelujah. Little Jesus is going around, little Messiahs, little Christ, little anointed, these little representatives of the king, hallelujah. Not political kings, not military kings, not conquering kings. Delivering kings, rescuing kings, bringing peace to people, hallelujah, bringing healing to people, casting the demons out of people's lives, hallelujah, hallelujah, announcing to the people the time of God's hearing and helping is here. The time of God's hearing and helping is here. The time of God's hearing and helping is here. The great king has come, the Lord, the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one, the great Great King Jesus has come. Hallelujah! The time of God's hearing and helping is here. The time of God's hearing and helping is here. The time of God's hearing and helping is here. Hallelujah. Fortunately, I'm out of time and I'm not finished. So come back next week. Thank you for being with us today. If this uh, message has been a blessing to you, please I ask the favor that you would share it with somebody that might get something out of it. Hallelujah. Also, if you could please do us the favor of hitting like, subscribe, the notification bell, and leaving us a good comment that'll help us reach more people here on YouTube. Thank you, thank you so much. If you want to learn more, you can go to our website, www.ivchristiancenter.com. You can also contribute to 
uh, keep this ministry going at our website by clicking on the Feed the Ox button. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for those of you who support this ministry and keep it going. We really, truly, hallelujah, appreciate you. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.